My name is Gwendolyn Bradshaw. I, I am a musician and an artist. I like to knit teddy bears. Um, in the process of writing a book about my life and I'm making an album. Uh, well, my disability, I have a couple of them. Uh, one is PTSD uh, from trauma that I experienced in my past. And also 60% uh, of my body is covered in fourth degree burn scars. It began with the burn accident, uh, with the scar tissue. I was 10 months old. My mother and father went out for camping during Memorial Weekend back in 1980. Uh, they went to Peters Creek Campground. It's shut down now, but Peters Creek is still there. <laughs> uh, when the campground was open, they, they camped out, enjoyed the Memorial holiday, drank in and had fun. Um, but later in the evening, uh, my father went inside the camper to start up the heater and all the nighttime necessities for sleeping. My mother was outside holding me and she threw me in the campfire. I was 10 months old, so I was in the campfire laid on top like a baby. She didn't just throw me in, she laid me in the fire. Uh, she took off and ran to the creek and tried to drown herself. But my father scooped me up. He heard the screams from the fire. So he came out, scooped me up out of the fire, put me in the front seat of the pickup camper and drove to Providence Hospital as fast as he could. Uh, at the hospital, I had 50 50% chance of living. 60% of my body was covered in fourth degree scars, burn scars. And that gives me a, uh, skin arthritis so there's pain and surgeries involved with that too that happen periodically what happened to my mother though is she survived she didn't die uh, an off-duty firefighter was at the campground with his family and heard the commotion and investigated and he looked around and saw a woman laying on top of a bed of rocks, passed out. He went in and revived her, and she too was brought to Providence Hospital. So we were both at Providence Hospital dealing with it. My mother's disability is and was schizophrenia, uh, postpartum psychosis possibly happened. And the stress of the hormones triggered her schizophrenic episode. She was documented as the saying she heard a voice from God to lay me in the fire. There's challenges of not having a mother in my life. Uh, so I, I didn't really experience the tender loving part uh, growing up. That had challenges uh, for me as a child, because I didn't know how to express emotion. Um, crying, yelling, screaming kind of happened a lot in the household, but it really made no sense to me. Uh, I was brought up, I was raised, thankfully, by a, a, a blood relative, that's my dad. Um, but after that trauma experience, he dealt pretty deep into partying and drugs and alcohol. So he was, he was pretty vacant. Um, there's a lot of iron fist um, kind of upbringing. Like if I was caught with a mistake, I got beat up for it. It wasn't like I was educated on how to do something. It, no patience <laughs> for that. Um, so that having that disconnect with emotions and logic, and reason, I, I went into public school as a really different child that I didn't know what I needed really to, to be a part of the group, but I, I was pretty much an outcast because 
I, I couldn't relate. I couldn't relate to anything um, like the newest toys because we were poor or the latest fashions because I picked up clothes wherever I could, you know, no, pretty big disconnect. <laughs> really been consistently from as far back as I can remember I prayed I prayed to God a lot and that's been consistent all my life the one thing that kept me going what helped me cope in the adult part of my life is also the the talk therapy I got from therapy starting at 18 years old I have over 20 years of once a week therapy. So I should have a doctorate, an honorary doctorate in psychology. <laughs> it really helped a lot to be able to talk it out, process it, no matter how ugly it is. Ten years old, I started playing the violin. I'm self-taught. So that added a whole physical thing for me to connect to something and help me connect to like people and groups because we were focused on music, not fashion, not politics, nothing. It's just music. So that helped me connect with people. That was really nice in a physical way. Really, I just, music not only connects me to people, but it connects my brain. <laughs> like. I have these little miswires going on because of trauma and things, but music somehow can like really rewire my brain. I didn't, I give a lot of thanks to music. I write songs, sometimes with lyrics, and usually the lyrics are, I try to make it delicate, but it's usually trauma related. It's to give my side of the story in a really like poetic way without like, offending or scaring someone. <laughs> my movie, uh, About Face, um, you can find out more about it on aboutfacefilm.org. You can purchase a copy there or watch it on Roku. It's, it began in 2006 and it was for the search of my mother. Um, 2009, the movie was completed and shown uh, worldwide. Iceland, Israel, Europe, uh, everywhere, went everywhere. The, the main theme of the movie about face is finding closure to a lot of questions I had about my past, unanswered, unresolved questions that therapy couldn't crack. And I, I got those answers. <laughs> Currently, I have a part-time job and is that, it's as a test administrator for giving tests out to people. And I follow these protocols and parameters to make sure like COVID-19 safe. And, and um, I kind of stepped away from music teaching for a while and until I do my album. I might go back to it in the future. It's in my back pocket. But right now I'm just kind of part-time job, trying new things out. It just starts with prayer because in that moment it's happening. There's no one there to save you except prayer. And even when they get, the trauma gets re-triggered, even if it's different people, different situation, that trauma can be triggered and put you right back to the original trauma. And that even requires prayer just stepping away from it for like three seconds to say a little prayer, to get away from the tripwire. And 
things start to fall in place after prayer. Like I met cool people in psychology, like my therapist. Um, it's a Providence Behavioral Medicine Group. That's where I've been going for 20 years. It just it started off with prayer. Because if I, I didn't pray, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have sought out that physical help. So. Uh, this song's called Why. I've been, it's like a old, my, my old favorite. 